All right, everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna talk about DC motors because DC motors are a vast majority of the motors that we are gonna see in pretty much any modern day electronics. And uh, that's because they've come so far as far as technology goes. And uh, this one here might not be the best example of the latest and greatest, but uh, it's certainly gonna work for what we need. So guys, first off, you should know that um, there are three main types of motors. So you have brushed motors, you have brushless motors. Here's a brushless motor. In fact, <laughs> they're prominent telling you right on the back. But we also have one other type of motor that you might find, and that's called a AC motor. So these are DC motors, and we also have AC motors. And then there's the universal motor, which can run on AC or DC. Um, and, and you're gonna see some similarities on this, but one of the things that you should know is that for brush motors, there are brushes that carry the electrical connection from uh, the stator, which is the stationary side, to the rotor, which is the rotator part, the, the part that rotates in the middle. And you can see one of the brushes right here. Matter of fact, that's a nice looking brush. So we have DC, we have brushed and brushless, and the difference is, is that this one here uses electronic mystical circuitry to rotate the field from one value to the next, whereas this one here uses a commutator, which are little bars, and those brushes will ride on the bars, and when it gets to those bars, it then changes the field to the next segment. And when it changes the field, your north and south of your magnets are always pulling and pushing each other. So this one here does it electronically, which is why I can also easily change the speed. You can change the speed, you can control the torque, you can monitor the torque, versus the brushed DC motors, which is what we're gonna talk about today. They yeah, technically don't do any of that. They're kind of stupid motors. So with these motors here, um, you change the speed based on changing the voltage or you can change the pulse width modulation, the PWM, um, which is basically the square wave. You change it to be in a, a longer duty cycle, which means you change the pulse. So it's kind of like flicking on a switch. You flick on the switch really quickly versus you flick it on and then you shut it off. Flick it on, shut it off. So on this one here, if this one here was the positive and this one here was the negative, now it switches it. Now this is the positive, this is the negative. And that's how you switch the direction of the motor. You do that with an H-bridge, which is a series of four MOSFETs, and they're set so that they work in pairs, and then you switch them, and now you know these two work in pairs and these two, and it changes the polarity of the motor. So, anyway guys, that is the basis to these motors. Um, this one here does not use any brushes. That's why it's called the brushless. You can control the speed much more easily. You can control the torque much more easily and it has a feedback system. So the feedback system in this, it uses a Hall Effect network, which monitors little magnets in there, and it, it knows exactly where the rotor is, which is allow, it's how you can control the speed. This motor here has no feedback whatsoever, except somebody built a feedback type system here and so this is a Hall Effect sensor, which monitors the lobes right here on the flywheel. And you can see as the motor rotates, this part rotates, this stays stationary, but as an example, I will just rotate the body. And as the Hall Effect passes by each one of these lobes, it creates a pulse and it counts those pulses and that's how it knows how fast it is. Pretty cool. And usually if you are monitoring also the direction, then there will be a varying series of pulses. So you'll have like one here, you'll have two here, you'll have three here, and it knows the direction that the motor's going based on the pulses it gets. So if it gets three, two, one, it knows it's going in that direction. If it gets one, two, three, it knows it's going in that direction. But this here is basically uh, a motor for a treadmill, and this allows the treadmill to know how fast the motor's running. And it can control the pulse width modulation the pulsing of the AC and DC, or 
uh, on this particular treadmill, it's only DC. So it's pulsing DC. And it, that pulsing of DC is what creates your speed. So this guy here, uh, I figured this is a perfect opportunity to pull this guy apart and show you guys what is inside a DC brushed motor. So let's go ahead. First thing we're gonna do when we're disassembling a motor, we're gonna pull out the brushes. We wanna keep them safe, especially since they're such beautiful brushes. Now there are gonna be two brushes on this motor. Oh man. Let's go ahead and do this. So one of the big indicators of what type of motor it is, is the amount of wires going into it. So on a brushless motor, you are gonna have three wires going into it because it's a three phase motor. This one here is only two phases. You only have two brushes, so positive and negative. And then when you change direction, they switch to positive and negative. So this is a two phase motor or, you know, I guess you could say single phase. <laughs> and this one here is just ground. It's chassis ground. Now the reason that you have a hefty ground on a brushed motor is because the brushes, when they're riding on the commutator, as those commutator bars go by them and it, it rides on them, it creates a lot of electromagnetic noise. And in hospital medical environments, noise is really bad. I mean, you can hear it on speakers if you have a nearby audio system. You can see it on uh, displays if you have like a TV nearby. Electromagnetic noise is really bad in a medical environment. And this one here is a brush DC motor that's out of a commercial size treadmill. And this one here, if I imagine right, you can see all these motors have a data plate. And this particular one says that it is a 90 volt DC, 32.5 amp. So it's a three horsepower motor. Man, this guy sucks the juice too, I bet. It's very heavy, very, very heavy. So you have the brushes, you have a Hall effect sensor for telling you the speed. And notice how it's got this huge, heavy flywheel right on the front. And it's got this flywheel because that's how it helps maintain speed when you're running on the treadmill. Every time your foot hits that belt, it's creating drag on the motor. And the higher the rotating mass, the easier it is on the entire system to maintain its momentum. The same thing goes on your car. Most cars have either a harmonic balancer, which is a giant device that's on the crankshaft, or it's going to have a huge heavy flywheel for those manual transmissions out there. This guy here has technically the same thing. Yep, there it is. You can see that uh, the harmonic balancer slash flywheel on this guy um, is it's keyed. So it only goes in one particular way and you have to re replace the Woodruff key right here um, when you slide this guy on. Uh, you can see some notches in it right here and those notches are actually balancing marks. So they drill into it and they remove material on one side or the other a particular amount to create a balance. So this is a balanced motor. Electronics and working outdoors just don't work well, but that's okay. This motor here is basically not ever gonna be used again. This is for demonstration purposes and that's why I'm tearing it apart for you guys. All right, so here you can see I have my fan, which is mounted straight on the shaft. And as it rotates, this fan is going to suck air in the back and it's gonna blow it forward over the body and help keep it a little bit cool. Uh, you can see the commutator bars on the inside there. And as I rotate it around, you can see the brass and that brass is what houses those brushings. These are gonna be extremely long bolts that hold this guy together. Okay, you see these two rods thread all the way up to the front case. Now the back hub will be ready to fall off. There we go, okay. So we have some preload uh, bearings right here. You can see this one here is not a typical washer. It's a thrust washer and its cone is facing towards the, uh, the commutator, which you can see the commutator right here. And what happens, you can see the brushes ride along the commutator like that. As it rotates around, these commutators are attached to coils, which are on the rotor and the rotor will change the polarity of the coils on the rotor according to 
these guys and where they're indexed as it rotates. Anyway, the important thing is that you can see the rotor, which is the piece that rotates right here in the middle. It has coils in it and the outside here has got permanent magnets. These large things right here are permanent magnets. So you have a north and a south permanent magnet and your rotor right here will change its polarity and it will push and pull against those permanent magnets. Now one of the reasons that this is such a compact design is because by using permanent magnets you're not using coils. With an AC motor your outside, your stator is going to be coils while your inside your rotor is also going to be coils and those with an AC motor your fields are going to be constantly changing which is how it rotates. On this one here the fields for your stator, which is your permanent magnets, they are always going to stay the same. You have a north, you have a south. Your rotor is what's going to change. And it's going to change according to the position of these guys and what coils are attached to these commutator bars. So commutator bars, you can see this one here is actually in a beautiful condition. Um, commutator bars will get dirty and there are little cuts in between them because they are electrically isolated from one another and those little cuts will sometimes get polluted or they'll get a little bit of debris between them and you can clean them out either with an X-Acto knife or you can clean them out by spinning the rotor on a lathe and turning them down. Uh, which means you change the dimension of this just a little bit, maybe uh, by a thousandth of an inch. You cut those commutator bars down and create a fresh new surface so that now they're electrically isolated again and get a nice even curved surface for these brushes. You can see the brush itself is curved. That's kind of cool because it rides beautifully along this. Now you will see hot spots and you'll see areas where it's arcing and sparking. if you have uh, defective commutator bars or a defective winding. There's a little bit of maybe a hot spot right there on this one, but uh, nothing to be worried about. You'll know because the copper will change its color and they will start to weld together. But uh, no, this, this is in beautiful condition. So guys, this is a perfect example. I wanted to take this opportunity to show you guys what a brushed DC motor looks like. And you can see right here, how your brushes will ride. They have these, these preload springs, which means they, they push them in towards the middle. And these brushes will sit right here on your commutator. So this is a really good motor. It's got uh, not just uh, preload washers, but it also has nice bearings on the shaft. So if I was gonna go through and redo this motor, I'd probably redo these bearings as well. Um, the shaft is clearly had a uh, kind of a rough life because it's got a little bit of corrosion here but uh, based on the looks of this motor even though it's used it's in beautiful condition so you can see the the brush housings right here which ride and guide them in and out those brush housings are made of brass and that is uh, not only because brass conducts electricity but it also conducts heat and you want to cool down those brushes because brushes get hot they're made of carbon and they're technically a soft material I can probably yeah, see, I can kind of scratch it with my fingernail. And uh, brushes are kind of like pencil lead. It's graphite and carbon. And matter of fact, I, I, I could probably write on this table with the brush. So it's a very soft material, but it does build up a lot of heat energy in this housing. So that's why you blow the air over the housing to help cool it down, help cool down that brass. But guys, that is uh, brush DC motors in a uh, nutshell. Now one of the things I didn't show you is that you can use your multimeter <laughs> if this guy was together and you can actually test out a brush DC motor by connecting your multimeter up to the two leads that go into your brush motor and you put it on ohms and then you check to see what your ohms are. You should have ohms. I can tell by connecting up any multimeter to a brush DC motor the condition of the commutator right here. I can tell instantly because first off, it should be really low ohms. I mean, think about it. It's just, you have just one wire coming in, going into a coil and then coming back out the other one. So it should be extremely low ohms. You're talking like 10 ohms and less. And if I rotate this guy around, I should see a pretty consistent ohms load 
But if I see jumps in ohms, like up in the kilo ohms, then I know that my, my uh, commutator is a little bit dirty and the contact to my brushes is not really that good. So I would then know to tear it apart and check on it. This motor here checked out beautifully and you can see why is because your brushes are good, the commutator bars are beautiful. And if I wanted to clean this up a little bit, you can take a little bit of sandpaper and, you know, rotate it on really high grit, let's say like a thousand or 2000 grit, just to clean them up a little bit. But in this condition, there's no way I would test them. I, I would keep it exactly how it is. When you're assembling them, make sure that the brushes go in last, make sure that these uh, preload washers go in in the direction that they came out. You can see that when they're flush against one another, that cone, it's cone to cone, and it creates like a spring. And that allows a certain amount of preload between the rear housing and this bearing. So that keeps it nice and centered. And you always want the tolerances to be as minimal as possible. And that's what these preloads help to, to facilitate. Um, the other area where these motors often go really bad is right here where the metal for each of the coils attaches to the commutator bars. And on this particular unit, they are just spot welded in. You can see right here, spot, spot, spot all the way around. Well, that is not the best thing for motors. Like most brushless motors like this, the commutator is going to be epoxied. So it's always best to see some sort of schmoo or epoxy right here keep those wires from vibrating around because copper is infamous for something called work hardening and work hardening is when you bend copper back and forth it eventually just breaks so these ones right here with any motor vibration whatsoever they will want to vibrate against the, the rotor which is very stationary your commutator bars and they always break right here so if you don't have epoxy on this right here it's probably not that good of a motor this one here is already balanced as I showed you up here on your flywheel. So that's probably why they didn't take the extra effort. And the spot welding on these bars is really good. It looks really good. Some of them are just barely tacked on, but these ones are really pressed in. So they gave it a hot supper. But this is a Baldor motor and Baldor are some of the best motors that you can get. You see them on all sorts of industrial electronics. And uh, this one here is a brushed DC motor for a treadmill. Anyway guys, hope you like this video. Just a quick once over of brushed DC motors. A little bit of a tear down. I wish I had a puller so I could pull the rest of it apart, but you get the point. Your rotor in the middle, it's got coils. The coils change their polarity based on the brushes here on the commutator. The electricity comes in on two wires and by changing the polarity of these two, the direction, you change the direction of the motor. Very simple. All right, guys, thank you for watching. Hope you like these kind of videos. If you do, please give me a thumbs up and let me know if you have any other suggestions for videos in the future. I'd love to hear them.